Hello and welcome back to round one coverage from the 2023 United States Disc Golf Championship presented by Innova. We're in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We are looking at Anthony Barella on the back nine. You're watching Joe Mesh Pro, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Coley, William Gray. Kind of a tame front nine, I think in some ways. Uh, the, the weather is certainly tame right now. It's actually better than maybe any US DGC round that I can remember. The winds are down, the temperature's nice and in the mid 80s, maybe low 80s. Um, but yeah, the scores are okay. Simon Lazat clean right now, four under. Anthony Brella clean three under, but you'd like to see those scores in the six under range if you're trying to be in that top contention as well as the weather has been cooperating thus far. But if you can put together a solid back nine right now, you're gonna jump up the leaderboard because regardless of how calm the conditions are, this place can be brutal. Hole 10, par four, 549. A little bit downhill though, so don't let that distance fool you. You can lay up to the left um, pretty much as far as you'd like, but it is a skinny landing zone or you can take it out over the OB the whole way into that very, very tight green. Really famous hole here. Wow. Simon laying up. 549 is not as the disc flies to the basket. That is playing around the long way. I think it's only 460, 470 to the pin. That's Simon's first career layup on this <laughs> hole. I gave him a funny look after he did that, and he, he told me that he's never it, done it before. Oh, it's, it legitimately is. Yes. Wow. wonder what was telling him to lay up in practice. Anthony just playing the smooth hyzer out wide perfectly. To the skinniest part of the landing zone. He didn't love it out of his hand, but he throws so far he gets away with it in this case. But you'd like to see it move a little right. You like this guy's shot shape for this hole. Moving the just, right. Yeah, it just depends on how stable this disc really is, and it looks like it's, it's that right enough. amount. Yeah. I, I love the, the flex play shape for 10. Gannon will be rewarded with an eagle look, and you're going to go with the play that you've gone with for a long time, aiming at that church in the background underneath those two trees. Yeah, that's the plan. Flippiest firebird here. And Very if good. you hit those trees, you're just fine. It's only maybe, let's call it 280 from there. Yeah, at tops. Simon, big hyzer here, trying to swing it inbounds. Oh, boy. Mm, not good. Oh, boy. That's going to be a rethrow. And Simon Lazat paying the price for his first ever safe play. I can't imagine he'll be doing that in round two. I believe he does have the option to go to the drop zone. Yeah, he does, but you wouldn't really want to in this situation, most likely. You just got a feel for this shot. This is a shorter shot. And he's a little bit wow. loose with this one as well, yeah. out to 32 feet. The hole can be picked apart, sidearm, sidearm with Firebird, Firebird. You're going to see Nate try to do it that way. You know, this is a classic hole of what Winthrop does to you. It kind of lulls you to sleep if you try to play the layup game, and then uh, all of a sudden you're out of nowhere. You're looking at a 35-footer for bogey, and you're like, yes. that's so easy, and I missed by a foot. Yes. You yeah. know, because Simon's original shot as he misses this, double and he's going to take bogey. double. His other shot wow. is actually closer than that one is right there, possibly. And, and yeah. there's quite possibly nothing more frustrating in the world than playing the safe play and still ending up with a double bogey and that's exactly what's happening right now for simon he's going to drop back to two under par Gannon burr for eagle oh my goodness they aren't going to see that very often but again this place will do that to you it seems like <clears throat> pardon me every hole is on some sort of high rise, little slope, feet aren't exactly underneath you. And if you don't completely focus on those 25 footers, they're not gimmies. That's the one of the worst feeling birdies Gannon's gonna ever have. That putt does not feel like a birdie when you're coming back. It feels like a 
maybe even a bogey putt. But it is a birdie, and it does get him 2-3 under par. And Simon, or 4 under par, excuse me. painful 6. Happens quick. 16 players able to get the eagle. Easiest hole in the course. Don't tell that to Simon right now. Robert Birch has got a stranglehold on this lead. Just stay in two strokes clear. So you play a lot of disc golf, but every time that you do, this happens. It's time to change that. And the Power Disc Golf Academy is here to help. Paul Uliberry and Simon Lazat have taken their knowledge and experience from over 350 combined pro tour starts and jam-packed that knowledge into an academy with video tutorials on everything from practice drills to driving to upshots to putting and much more. All to give you the power to take your game from this to this. Hole 11, par four, 734 feet. This one is hazard rules all the way. So all these long grass areas, you'll play where it lies with penalty. Unless you get up there across the path on the right or the path on the left, that would be traditional out of bounds. Really slopey, difficult landing zones. As you can see here, you got a lot of landing zones to pick from, they're just small. I think the most common play is to target the 450 range. If you can throw it about 450, the fairway is as wide as it's gonna be. I think this is uh, the last two years are my favorite iteration of this whole design ever. I think it looks beautiful. I love it's all very Link style in a way with the like kind of bunkers running up and down the fairway on both sides. Anthony, perfect distance there. And I, I like the hazard rules as well because yeah. I think it does incentivize aggressive play. And who yes. doesn't like aggressive play? Gannon going high down the hedges. Heisering back. This is, I think, the shape that AB was looking more for. But yeah, do you way, think both it, Anthony's going to be tucked over there with some limb issues, or is he in a pretty good spot? Pretty good, but a little bit. He's a gonna, little bit. It, it pro I mean, if he goes forehand, it's going to have to be a flex forehand. And if he goes backhand, then it's going to have to be pretty wide. Talk about some limb issues. This is I terrible. I think this is oh, close. Oh, boy. This is a horrible shot. This and, has been what's plagued me so far uh, lately it's just kind of the confident backhands with me in practice and then trying to get it to the big show i've had that early release issue and that's so bad it's in the hazard and it's right behind a tree yeah that's going to be a very tricky up and down to save the par simon meanwhile that seems to slow down yeah, he's actually out driven on hyzer the long landing zone and that's about 470 off the tee and he still goes long This is oh, disaster. And that drops OB again. Straight hazard. Into the hazard. Only went about 80 feet. Oh, it should be very easy from there, but still the damage is now done. Hard to play it much worse than that with your opening two shots. How, how, I don't know, how viable was that second shot for you? Or I guess technically it was your third shot. Not very. I should have gone to a backhand, most likely. Yep. So AB does have to go the big wide hyzer. Needs the stick, and it does. That's a great shot from there. That is a tough shot playing onto that slope right there. Height is essential, and making sure that the disc doesn't have any extra velocity coming into its landing. Look at this play, though. Simon was bothered by that rock a little bit on his yeah. approach, but he was able to get his footwork right and just drift Beautiful. it in perfectly. What do you guys think about the, the rocks as opposed to the famous yellow rope? I think the rocks look really good, but it is kind of unfortunate. I mean, just in the same way that a stake of that holds up the rope could get you, mm -hmm. but the rocks are so big, and when you do land right next to them, that can be a bit frustrating. Aesthetically, I, I much prefer it. I think yes. it's a great look, and I also like that it stays there throughout the year, so you can come play Winthrop whenever you want and kind of envision how the course plays for the tournament. AB still keeping a clean scorecard. That's pretty, that yeah, brings that's him to five under. Which, if he were to stop right now, come tomorrow, five under is a He'd great be happy. score. Great sure. score. Keeps you right in the mix. And you're never going to see anyone just pump the brakes at five under, but you're right. There's so many times when you, you, you're off to a great start out here and you just finish with five or six over from wherever that point was and just think, I could have played for par. Like, what the heck? But Winthrop is so attainable, so attackable. Everything that you 
Aside from really hole three, in my opinion, every single hole in this course is attackable for birdie. It's a tough put course to play for par on most of these holes too, really. Mm -hmm. And maybe actually 13. I think 13 and, and three are the two that are kind of hard to attack, but the rest of the course is right there for birdie and it's hard to know when to really pump the brakes. Robert Bird now has a three shot lead. It, he's on incredible. fire. Incredible. On fire, nine under through 11. Hole 12, par four, nine oh one. That OB circle area added, I believe last year has really made this hole another level more difficult than it used to be. It used to be uh, even a par five with this exact same tee and pin location way back in the day. So it definitely needed some more teeth and that big circle area certainly gives it that. You gotta have big power. It's about 475 feet to clear. He's gonna need help from the Joshua tree down here. And what side does it fall on? The it looks like he's going to be safe, though. Safe? Yes. You have some space out there to the right. There's a little area there that's protected with the grass. But, yeah, he's going to have to just lay up with yeah. a, either a turnover backhand or a big forehand hyzer. Yeah, certainly has to play for par from there. Which, honestly, isn't, isn't a bad spot to be. No. When it forces a, an aggressive player like that to lay up for par because what a shot. from where Gannon is right yes. here, this is a great spot. But from there to the pin is what I feel like on this course, probably the second most dangerous place you could be on the course. 330 feet, completely blind. And there's no... Stroke and distance. There's nothing. Yeah, you and just, stroke if and you distance, mess, yes. If you mess up, you just throw it again, throw it again, throw it again. And that's the way this hole plays all the way into the green. If you miss a putt, roll out of bounds, you re-putt. Simon matching Gannon's. You're going to be throwing that same shot, and you're going to go with the forehand, conceding the birdie, just getting yourself in position to take the par, which is a great score on 12. Yeah, that big circle is just in the landing zone of a guy like me. It is. It's a takes a special throw for me to beat the 470 and be able to get into a spot that I like. Now talk about how important it is for you to stay up the hill to the left. Are you trying to be in a position where you can see the basket on that third shot? That is and definitely an added bonus. And also I'm just terrified of that right side OB. So I certainly want to push towards the road with that shot. Anthony does a great job here of doing just that, getting way up there near the corner. But yes, absolutely. It's nice to be able to see the flag. And Simon you can see can, Simon can't even see it. And there is a flag on this basket. So maybe you can see the top of it. Barely see it. Yeah. And that just barely comes up short. And one of the cruel things they do here preparing for this event is they leave the out of bounds area high in the grass. And you are not going to see many people skip from OB to inbounds. And this one needs to sit. No. Okay. Oh, great shot there. Good recovery, but yeah, that's going to be a bad stretch of holes for Simon with 10, 11, 12. And you just really, I mean, if you could avoid anything on this course, it'd be rethrows. And Simon stuck himself with one on 10 and yep. another one here on 12. And that's kind of a worst case scenario if you're, you're having to take penalties and not netting any distance. Gannon with a nice shot there with that mid range. From, Very fast from birdie those putt. Same spots that Simon and Gannon were at. I've seen many of tournaments lost. Absolutely. From that exact spot. A lot of people I've I've seen six, seven, eight under, even nine under going into hole twelve and then twelve. Yes. Eleven. Yes. Ten. And a good approach for you. It'll be a par on twelve, just how you drew it up. I mean, even this, even though he's putting it, it's a tricky little putt. I mean, he catches the edge of that brick. You could roll out of bounds. Out of, very fast. Easily. Seen, it, seen it happen, yes. How aggressive does Gannon play this one? I, I say know. very aggressive. He doesn't like pars. Hole one, I believe he got one of them. Hole two. Half of his last name is Birdie. Of course he's not going to try to play for birdie or par, for par. Half of his last name. Oh, Birdie. Is Birdie. Half of his last name is Birdie, not yes. I would maybe say half of Birdie is his last name. 
Yeah, sure. Know. However, I'm, you want to make just, sense I'm just of trying, it. I'm just trying Look, to parse my. I'm way not through in the it. business of getting everything I say right. I That's why in, you're here. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to parse my way through it. Parse? Yeah. Parse. Trying to parse your way through it. I certainly am. And the SAT me right now. <laughs> I don't know what you guys have been talking about. You guys lost me with words with Birdie. <laughs> I've purchased 60 acres of land in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I am designing a disc golf course for the one and only Dylan Sweet. It's just a giant hill right in front of the team. <laughs> Hole 13, par four, up and over. Blind drive for the players, trying to get out and over that hill, out around with the hyzer, big forehand, or the flex. Gotta stay to the left side of the path to be in bounds. And this is the longer pin, the more guarded pin, the more difficult pin. Really, really long and difficult second shot. You've gotta keep it so straight to be able to have yourself a birdie look. I'm surprised this isn't higher on the uh, difficulty chart here. It's only the fourth most difficult, and I, I would have thought it would have been in the top two. Shades of last year's final round as Gannon gets tangled up with that tree. I remember he had that same problem coming down the stretch. He'd be so high with the hyzer. He's a hurry. Yeah, that's wide. And that's going to drop out of bounds. And the hyzer play is one of the safer shots that you really have on this hole off this tee. Surprising OB result for AB. I think this is the safest shot. And I told AB he should do this now. Because he throws a forehand way bigger than me. We'll see if he ever listens to anything I say. <laughs> <laughs> you are a major champion. Here. It's launched. Yeah, nice drive. Nice and left. Going to open up that gap for the backhand. He'll be able to see the basket. Gannon has to just play position here. No way to get aggressive from this spot. Just wants to make some progress up the fairway. And he's done that. Tough shot from there, too, to save the par. This is sort of a... Decision time. I think Anthony's That's, thinking about getting aggressive. Gosh, that is so far from here. I mean, inside 500, but I mean, I mean, it, barely, more than 450. Yeah, barely inside 500. Good kick. Just comes straight down in the middle of the fairway. That could have been much worse. Be happy with a bogey from that early of an out of bounds stroke. So you have to stay left here. I'm trying to throw flex forehand, oh, and no. I just did not do it. I go straight oh. into the out of bounds. Well, that's. Good play for next round minus just need to be about 10 feet farther on that second shot. I just think, yeah, you really don't want to mess with it at all. I try to tell myself, throw it into the woods left before you go into that out of bounds tree on the wow, right. Wow, what a beautiful shot shape for Simon. And he's going to be rewarded with a guarded 30 footer. Um, let's call it 27. I think I just saw the circle's edge. But phenomenal. I mean, you don't oh, see very beautiful. many people get putts here. No. And Gannon's got kind of a turnover look. Needs to get up and down to save the par. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be drifting left. And he, he threw this. I was right behind him. And mm. as soon as it came out of his hand, he went, I forgot there's a ceiling. <laughs> and then he hits it and falls. And he's like, ah. Like he, he threw exactly how he wanted to. Okay. But he just wasn't thinking about a height restriction. Yeah. And uh, pays the price. Falling down well short. AV will be left with 26 feet for the bogey. Why not where the spotter says? I don't think he was standing like right there, right? He was inside the I tree. I was right here and I came in. Oh, where are you? Right okay. So, that's the only reason I know exactly huh? I came like right here. So, I mean, it's a good decision, I guess. Yeah, it's, I would go that, with it's the totally spotter up says just because he has by far the best sight on it. I felt like it didn't hit this. Yeah. Like I threw it on flex and I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, I knew I shanked it, but I felt like it beat this. Is what I, I, what I, I was like there, this corner where it kind it of comes out. It doesn't matter that much. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I don't. I'm What'd you see on the replay? Deal, 
I, I still kind of think I'm right, but I would I want to see it again because the spotter mark be really short, like 30 feet short of where I'm standing right now. Okay. You made it to that second bush. Yeah, I, I would have. I I tend to think that that's where I would have spotted you, but you know I wasn't standing where the spotter was. And it's obviously no big deal, and he's doing his best. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to look. I'm gonna be winding that one back because I want to make sure you know that my eyes saw what I thought they saw as well. This is a little bit long. Yeah, and gosh, this green is nearly protected 360 what? degrees. I do want to say something about this whole. Players don't know. Spotter says something. Other player says this, and then when another person on your card says, "I'll give you halfway." It's, that's not it's not it that's not this isn't a compromise yeah this isn't a compromising <laughs> rule it is benefit goes to the player and if you don't give the benefit to the player then you know that they went out at a certain point so therefore there's not a little benefit yeah you know you get yeah, what i'm saying totally. that's very Pick frustrating yes Be either firm. say that i that's oh, a great putt there from, that is an amazing birdie but either either say hey you didn't make it there stand by your actions or Give them the spot that they think that they got. Sure. 19 players birdied 19? 13. Wow, that is, that's that's a, it's a shockingly high number. Yeah, it is. Me. I mean, we're, we're seeing a lot of other holes that had far fewer birdies that are way more accessible than 13. But Also, I want to say to all our volunteer spotters out there, thanks for what you do. And just because players maybe question your spot that's not a big deal yeah, that's part no, of the game like after we got done with that interaction the guy was like hey sorry man i was what you have nothing to apologize for sure. all you're doing is calling it like you see it and that's yeah. the same thing i'm trying to do there's nothing to worry about in that yeah. situation well how do you call this one this one i had barely enough room <laughs> okay th thankfully there was enough room okay if i was about three four feet farther we might have had a problem and you know jonathan Poole, the event director for 25 consecutive years here at the USCGC. He says one thing every year, that the tournament that makes this the best, the best RAN tournament is the, the volunteers. That yes. vastly outnumber the players. We're talking in the numbers of 200 plus volunteers for 109 players. So incredible stuff. Thank you to everyone that comes out here, Absolutely. volunteers their time and just makes this course as beautiful as it is. Hole 14, par three, 413. Down left of the rocks and left of the path is all hazard. The street long is out of bounds. So only that area of the green on the left side of the path is inbounds. Big forehand is common. Big backhand hyzer over these trees is also a play you see. And, and sometimes you see people go kind of with a straight backhand mid-range. Simon is going to go big. How did you know that? He's because he's Simon. <laughs> I was closing my eyes. Holy so I actually moly. Didn't know. That is such a big hyzer. Just wanted to spike on the other side of that cart path, but a decent result nonetheless. So here Gannon was trying to ask me where the tee pad really is, and it's not very well defined, to be honest. Uh, I just sort of told him. I think we've always played the trapezoid. Yeah, I told him it's all this. There's, I don't see how anyone could call it any other way. There's no lines to to tell you where it is so yeah he was worried that like he would have one foot off you should have said uh how about we give you it like right here yeah. halfway like, you know, kind of a wiggly <laughs> line <laughs> oh i'm not is that the right no, name for that shape the trap is with the five point that's not a pentagon i don't think there's any way anyone can call that um i'm gonna look it up no it's, it's not okay cool i don't think rhombus think maybe is it, is it a rhombus Does this have the distance? If it does, I like it. If it doesn't, I'd hate it. No, it's not rhombus. I hate it. Yeah. Okay. But it had the right angle. Yeah. Just he he really he knew right away when he let that thing go. Anthony going with the forehand, and this is really wide. Too wide. Is it too I don't know what these kids anymore. It's oh, a wow. great reaction. Like, not only does it hit the hay bale, it hits the hay bale and juices like 20 feet in yeah. bounds. Like, circle one. Loving it. Trying to match AB with a little skipper. This is high. Is it going to hit the path? We're going to call it a Pentagon. It is going to hit the path. Yeah, unfortunately... That's it looked pathy to me. It's, it, and it certainly was. Yeah. It certainly was at the end of the day. 
but it, it's an annoying shot because three yep. feet to the left and it just sits parked. Yep. But then you get out here and uh, it's not a happy place out here. No, not when you have a zippy putt and your long distance putt is kind of zippy. And man, what a good run that was. Thought I made it. That would have been serious highlight, Bill. I was just trying to imagine uh, the putt I had made already on hole three. I was like, yeah, just put it up in the air. Maybe it goes in. Simon has not had a similar score in a very long time, and he's not going to again. With the right side chain out, he can't believe it. One famous thing about the USDGC is round one, hole 14, nothing rolls away. <laughs> and yeah. uh, when you miss putts, fast it's forward final, that round three and four. Final round, you miss any sort of putt. That thing is might roll into the highway. Gannon's attempt to save par does not find the basket. He hasn't had a par in a very long time. A lot of birdies, a couple bogeys. Going to add one to the scorecard here on 14 as AB picks up the nice birdie. I'm kind of annoyed that a Pentagon, I thought it was just five equal sides, but it, it could be any shape of five sides. Gannon oh, is no, low. no, that's... Oh, oh, I said final round. Oh, that, it, you might as well Hand pick up. up and retry. Yeah, Hand that's up. on you, Yuli. My bad. That's on you. And he's going to reput for the six, and that barely hangs on. It just happens so fast out here, doesn't it, guys? Yeah, just brutal. Oh, didn't see that one coming. Me neither. <laughs> and he's missed a couple this round. He had that eagle putt on 10, quite short. Had another birdie putt back on two that he jump putted. Kind of surprised us a bit. I mean, we're getting pretty nitpicky here, but we don't, we're not used to seeing him missing oh. putts like that. That was that, pretty brutal. Yeah, that was a brutal one. Kyle Klein. Klein at nine under now. Clawing his way up. Robert Burge and his safe lead is no longer safe, but never was ever safe no. this early. But he had three strokes on the field at one point. Pretty impressive to do at any time during the USCGC. Hole 15, par 4, 539. Triple Mando. Really beautiful hole. Take your straightest disc, throw it as far as you can down this tunnel, get around the corner, throw some sort of tricky upshot into a very guarded green. That's the goal here. Did oh, AB... no. And does it glance forward or? Oh, man. Well, it's hard to say if that's bad or good. I yeah, think. It, I feel like it's the same score. It's kind of the same thing. It, yeah. Whether you, depending on how far you in know there what? you potentially It get. actually might be better to go to the drop zone. Because I don't think from there that you're going to have any chance to get the par. And you could. From the drop zone, and you, you can from the could. par. Yeah. You, you might prefer to miss it. You're right. Come on, man. And that, did that save you? Uh, maybe. I, I don't know that it was going to. I think it was heading for the lattice, maybe. Yeah. I don't think it was going to go through clean or anything. It wasn't a good shot. Is that what that bush is called, the lattice? No, the lattice cut the French fries, dude. Haven't you like, been to Chick Fil A? Listen, you guys have said twenty-five words. I have no clue this this round, and you're talking you're about trapezoids you and know. pentagons. And it must be a Thursday. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> Layman's terms. Did you not know the wood. that the Chick Fil A fries hit, are lattice cut? He almost hit the wood. Yeah, the, the wood. triple Mando wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is what you're reduced to when you throw a bad shot here. Pretty much just lay down this forehand roller, try to wrap it to the left. And there you go. Can't really do it much better from that angle. Yeah, and you, you can't do it much better or and why much would worse, you? really. Yeah. It, just sort of, it just sort of does okay. AB, oh, low, just missing the ceiling by great deal. Outside C2 remaining for the par for AB. Again, it had a great drive. The only one to successfully navigate the Mando. Got the big skip. Let's see if you can bounce back. To navigate the lattice. Well, mm, that's not you, well, how that works. Yeah, You're getting close. No, I'm pretty sure I nailed it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the uh, foliage here on the green on oh, 15. Oh, no, don't do this. <laughs> little turnover. Gannon, I think, made a bit of a mistake there. Um, playing to that right don't side. Don't want to go to the right side. 
And he knew it right away. He was frustrated. I, if I'm him, I mean, I think that left side is calling to me because his putt is so good from, you know, I don't, I don't know that he notices the difference between 15 and 35 feet sometimes. Yeah, maybe not. But uh, he's going to have some uh, work to do. AB wanting to drive that a good bid from that distance with that low of a ceiling. And this is what Gannon has left. Can't get much trickier and unable to get the disc down. I think he had to go through the little triangle gap and he navigated that successfully, but so hard to get it over these branches and then back down in time. And just one of the a, trickiest greens on tour, really, whole yeah. 15. Yeah, and a super frustrating par for him after that incredible drive. I was in the same spot and I didn't, I didn't hit any part of the basket. <laughs> the V. You hit the tree. Yeah. Yeah, you just straight up hit the tree. Yeah, the lattice. It's not how that works. <laughs> AB. And under our wow. first double digit score, Kyle, Kyle Klein. Klein. Yeah, and early. He had a double bogey in hole two. Wow. Waffle fries, lattice cut. It, it's the. Oh boy. Oh boy. Full 16, par 3, 391. Hazard surrounds this fairway on all sides. Long, right, left, everywhere. You miss it. You're going to play from that lie with a penalty. Backhand up the middle is the prescribed play here. Mid range, ideally. So it can go straight the entire time. This looks like fairway driver to me. It looks that way to me too. But does that surprise you at all? It's going well, to Well, you just said get down. This yeah. has got some steam. Heiser will oh, put the brakes on and the edge of the circle just staying in bounds. That's going to be tricky coming back to the green with the I think he's far enough, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's no? I don't think so. Okay. I I don't think so. I think he's going to have to split those last two. Okay. But we'll see. Nate, you ended up deciding on the Forehand with the Firebird. Yeah, I'm trying Flex Firebird here. Okay. Always have gone around in the past. And but I love it. I love it. You did it. You did it. Almost made it. Almost kind of did. And that really wasn't that close to hitting anything off that left side either. That was a great shot. And I have to thank Anthony Burrell. I didn't know what to do on the way what, over. What, I said, I are you... Uh, are you going to throw backhand? He said, yeah. I said, I always go around the outside. And he said, why don't you throw Firebird? I said, oh, we'll probably be short. Wait, but what? then I did it anyway. Wait. And it worked. What? That's I didn't not believe how the... you when you said it. We just talked about this in the practice round. I didn't believe you. But Anthony, I believe. That's fair. How many U.S. titles was Look that? out. Oh, no. Oh, that looks so good. It did. But now it, it doesn't. It takes a big kick into the hazard for Gannon. And he's got a long putt and for the par from OB. Well, from the hazard. Anthony going putter. Bingo. Is it going to turn? Bingo. It's turning. Wow, that's really good. Kid's good. Turns out. you can throw control shots with your putter at 391, you're going to do well in this game. And that's how Gannon finds par on 16. Putting a Band-Aid on it. Pow. Right there. Loads the hit. Releases. That thing just doesn't have a chance to go anywhere else. Comes in with such velocity. Yeah, definitely in the way. And is he gonna try? He's gonna go Anheuser, I believe. Try to go around. Bingo! What a putt! Beautiful. Great putting. For Simon and Gannon, and the last two drives are nearly bullseye. Ooh. Yeah. Even if one you of those was squared is, up, I think he there's no way he misses from that close. You think this is where they garden the trees that they end up putting on nine? 
eventually after a few this years. This is where they start them. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Probably. Because I don't get Christmas vibes from these at all. No. But as they as they grow, <laughs> mature, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But let's all give credit where credit's due. They listened. They got rid of the mozzarella sticks. They were an eyesore. They put something a little bit more natural in. They still wanted to keep that bunker effect on that side of the green. And I think it's an acceptable compromise. Freeman and Klein. Look at that. Freeman's new here on the leaderboard at 10 under. Well, at, at the top, I should say. Hole 17, par 3, 249. The most famous hole in the world. Hay bales oh, okay. guard all of the out of bounds, including that water over there. That is also out of bounds. This is an island hole. First one rethrow second one rethrow third one rethrow then you get to go to a drop zone simon with the little anheuser oh wow cutter. that is a thing of beauty if it has enough pace <sighs> wow just incredible shot can you throw a better shot than that that I don't was think so, so good <laughs> i don't think so and you are not Throwing a Firebird, you're going Toro here, and this yeah. is ultra wide. Getting aggressive. I like it, though. No, the wrong part of the inbounds area. Kind of juiced it. I did. Because I, have no, mm. I haven't tried the mid-range. I'm trying to become a forehand mid-range guy. I knew if I, I felt like I need to throw it harder than I think when I'm going down in mm -hmm. speed. And then the hard thing is, then you go to a Firebird, and then you're like, well, don't throw it too far. You just threw a mid-range. No. Oh, no. So then I hit the hay bales, and oh. now the wheels are coming off. And you are riding a tricycle down the highway right now. Yeah, really, really bad. Uh, then now just lay this one up, and it's pretty much a big number at yeah. that point. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to get aggressive and try to park it for the six. You're going to – essentially, you're reduced to a seven at that point. I mean, it would be very – very incredible. It'd be so gutsy to try to go for the pin after those first two misses. AB, is this enough? Oh, barely. Very good shot. Do you guys think this hole would be easier if it was longer? Yes. I think it, I kind of think it would be. I think like, it's I a think, perfect distance. I think part of the difficulty is that it's an off speed throw. Totally. Woo! Slow right around. The down, back. and it does. So often. You'll see players go with that shot shape, but with a faster disc, and it bounces and rolls OB that time. And it puts the brakes on perfectly. And a bid for the six from range, but it will be that quadruple bokeh seven now. Painful. Painful, painful, painful. stuff. But some good drives from my card mates. And a good putt as well. Maybe even putting very well all day. Even if his misses have been online. Gannon, not his best putting day. No. But he's made some good putts still. I mean, 110-foot bank shot, you try that. But that is that is exactly what his not best putting looks like. It yeah, still has sure. like five putts that I'd be like, could I do that once in my life? <laughs> like <laughs> just a zapper from... <laughs> 120. Yeah. So those are still in there, but he's chained out a couple of 25s. Yes. That's for sure. And the one that rolled Simon. on him on 14, that was his big nightmare moment. This this hole is my nightmare. Well, moment. let's give a shout out. Cole Rodolin, the yeah. ace on the hardest pin position on the 17. This is the A position. There will be two this week. But getting the ace in round one on 17, unforgettable for him, no doubt. Yeah, think, no chains required. He just dumped it. I didn't see the replay. No chains, really. No chains just hardly at all. Just right in the bottom. Well, side was on his backhand or no side? forehand? Okay. Oh, it's so cool. Well, the hardest hole in the course, guys. 4.44 average here on 18, 800 and, or 647 feet, but it might as well play like 847 feet. Most players are going to probably try to check up a drive to find themselves in the bowl landing zone, which is about just under 300 feet off the tee to set up the best footing on the second shot. I think Simon's last shot not the one that he tapped in with, the one that he threw off the tee, was my shot of the day. Yeah, that absolutely. was just absolutely just just to, did exactly what he intended to, to put do. that much height on it and just drift it down to just flat at the right moment. Yeah, and clear the hay bales, but short of the water. It's it's a magical throw. Try throwing that on Sunday. <laughs> That's just going to be. This uh -oh. needs to slow down. Uh oh, 
pushing that left side. Mm. And it's out of bounds. And AB is going putter to avoid that exact result. That is a very unfortunate OB for AB right now. Let's see if Gannon can get things going in the right direction. He is four over in the last four holes. Pretty good spot. A little short of those little whiskers right there, which is a nice flat spot. Excuse me. He's three over in the last four holes. Nate just going with an absolute rifle. This needs to get down. get down. It's high enough up the hill where it's really steep, so it prevents the skip out of bounds and a fortunate roll that it doesn't roll down the hill out of bounds. And in the end, you're in a pretty dang good spot. Yeah, I can't complain. I'm actually trying to throw it even farther than that. Get a little bit of flip and clear the hill, but... Uh, that was a good checkup for a, a little bit of an errant shot by me. Are you still at all hurt from the seven at this point? Or are you are you already past that? I'm past it, I okay. think. Uh, and I don't know that that's a good thing exactly. But but I yeah you know, I felt like I didn't feel I was having a good time. I'm trying to I'm trying to be aggressive, you guys. But it, it's not I'm not good at it. But someday maybe I will be. Who knows? Simon, this is a good looking angle if it's long enough, and it looks to be perfect. It sure is. Wow. What a shot. Those are some good holes to finish for Simon. That's going to get him to a nice solid five under par. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good couple, start. A couple miscues for him, but absolutely a good start. Decent looking shot. Got to get some good ground play. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. What a par save for Anthony. A lot of hyzer angle from this down left side, but still the footing is never easy, and he delivered a great shot right when he needed. Rock? Yeah, rock, Metal Flake Rock 3. Not a very common disc selection out of for you. I mean, you throw rock sometimes, but... Yeah, one time today. One time today, and it was thrown well, and you got a birdie putt. And in throwing his fourth. So overstable. It looked like it was going to stay high on the hill to me when he let it go, but then the thing just starts hooking up and beautiful skips down the hill. Great weight on it. Man, that's a good birdie. That'll make dinner taste just a little better. For sure. If you got to take a quadruple bogey seven, at least sandwich it with some nice birdie bread. So that felt good to get the birdie on the 18th. Not my best day by any stretch, but it was a pleasure and an honor to be uh, selected for the feature card and play alongside uh, some guys that have been playing really well this year. And that's going to do it for round one. Simon running to some trouble, 10 and 12. Other than that, a clean scorecard for him, and five under is a fine round, and it keeps you in the mix. Anthony Burrell also just a little bit of trouble in the back nine, but seeing some bogeys in the back nine is not uncommon at all. But it was uncommon for these four players here who are going to be on our lead card going into round two. Joel Freeman bogeys 18 and still shoots the hot round at 10 under. Joel Freeman had an eagle on hole 10, and then birdied 11 through 17. Wow. And then bogeyed 18. Just an insane nine down back nine. through eight on the back nine going into 18. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. It really is. I don't think I've ever seen a perfect or perfect plus one score on the back nine ever. And we've seen a lot of historical rounds take place yeah. here over the 25 years. Joel Freeman almost does something that we've never seen before, but either way, he will have the lead by a couple, by a stroke over a few players going into the round two. Yeah, I learned a lot of new things today. I learned Absolutely. about <laughs> trapezoids that, and uh, lattice. Lattice. I don't, I'm not lattice sure we can bunkers. say he's learned about lattice. Yeah. Parse? You said the word parse? I didn't know yeah. what that no, is. That's what yeah. we do here. That is exactly what we do here. <laughs> we try to, we try to, we talk disc golf, but who can do that forever, right? We got to spice things up. We got to bring a couple other little things. We got to get a couple things wrong, a couple things right. Hey guys, good luck to you for the remainder oh, of the go. event. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in all seriousness, Winthrop just delivers again. Six under, five under, one under, two, two over. Yep. That's the spot. Can't wait to watch it again tomorrow.